It's another beautiful Sunday again, and I'm very glad to be here, and I'm sure you are so much glad as well. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. It is the day you have made. We thank you for the privilege to be here, to learn at your feet. We thank you for your word that you bring to us today. And we ask, Lord, let this word, let this prune us, let this wash us, let it cleanse us, let it groom us in the name of Jesus. We pray for your servant that you would use. We ask for grace for him today that we speak from your heart, oh God. He will speak your word to us. He will speak into our life, speak into our season in the name of Jesus. You will grace him with everything that will be required for him to deliver your word to us today in the name of Jesus. And at the end of today, Lord, we will not remain the same again we ask lord for everything we're going to hear we ask for grace to carry them out in the name of jesus we say let it be a token even as we journey with you in the name of jesus father we thank you for hearing us we thank you for listening we thank you lord for all you're going to do in our lives today we receive your word in the name of jesus today let it illuminate us in the mighty name of jesus let it brighten our walk in the name of jesus father we say thank you we give you all the glory lord for in jesus name we have prayed. Amen. You are the reason why I lift my hands, why I lift my voice, why I sing to you. You are the reason I'm alive today. It's all because of you
why I lift my hands The reason I could face the day You're the reason I can sing Even when things seem so tough God, you are the reason the glory and the honor Lord we lift our hands in worship and we bless your holy name you deserve the glory and the honor Lord we lift our hands in worship and we bless your holy name for you are great you do miracles so great there is no one else like you no 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 there is no one else like you you are great you do miracles so great there is no There is no one else You deserve the glory And all the honor And the honor Oh God, we lift our hands We lift our hands in worship We will bless your holy, bless name. holy name You deserve the glory Bless 
Who is like, who is like unto thee? 
Faithful are you, Lord. Faithful are you, Lord. You are so faithful. You glad to him tonight, whatever you think he is. Glorious, wonderful, beautiful, faithful, mighty. It's perfect in all of his ways. You are so faithful. Faithful are you, Lord.
Such an awesome time of worship we've had today. The Lord is faithful to us. Hallelujah. Wonderful. As we delve into the word, you know, this believe that the same auction of the Spirit is upon us and um, we fellowship together this morning to receive of God's word, um, the spirit of revelation and grace, you know, to hear and to understand will um, rest upon each and every one of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So this morning, we'll be studying God's Word. We'll be looking at um, growing in grace. Growing in grace. Amen. Um, I'll read from Ephesians chapter 4, from verse 13 to 15. Until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a mature man, to the measure of the stature we belong to the fullness of Christ. As a result, we are no longer to be children tossed here and there by waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men, by the craftiness in deceitful scheming. But speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in all aspects into him who is the head, even Christ. Hallelujah. Talking about growing in grace, um, Growth is, is something that every one of us desire. Um, if as natural fathers, we, um, for anyone who has given birth a biological child, you know, the desire in your heart is to see your children grow, um, to experience, you know, their developmental stages. As wonderful and as amazing as every stage and as peculiar as every stage is, uh, the fact remains that um, you still want to see 
each child uh, move on to the next phase. So as wonderful as and amazing as every stage of the development of a child is, um, you know, the baby stage, like I said earlier, you know, the cuddling, the love, you know, as important and as beautiful as we enjoy those stages, the fact remains that we want our children to make progress. We want them to experience the next level of development. That is how it is, I believe, in the heart of God also. A desire in his heart to see that every one of us grow, you know, in our spiritual life, in our, in our, in our fellowship, in our relationship with him. Uh, not just talk to one stage, but, you know, grow, you know, make developments, you know, make advancements. That is how it is in the heart of God. That is why I said um, from the book of Ephesians that I read, you know, it, it was telling us about um, um, how each and every one of us, you know, will, be, will not be no longer children tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. Say so until we attain, because initially, reading earlier from that scripture, we're talking about how the gifts of Christ that are in the body of Christ, the gifts of Christ, the apostles, you know, the prophets, the teachers, the pastors, how they are all meant to build the, a believer, to build the saints of God to the point where they attain, to the point where we attain the unity of faith, where we come to the knowledge of the Son of God, to the place where we attain the unity of faith, where we uh, 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 attain the knowledge of the Son of God, to the place where we become a mature man, and where we obtain, where we also uh, attain the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. So because when we get to that level, we are no longer tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. Hallelujah. So that that's that's the scripture telling us it giving us a picture of what God desires, you know, of of um of the different development spiritual developmental stage, you know, for a child of God. If you read first John two fourteen, first John two fourteen also see something like I said, I have written to you fathers because you have known him who has been from the beginning. I have written to you, young men, because you are strong and the word of God abides in you and you have overcome the evil one. You see? So you see, the apostle was written, uh, 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 John, you know, was writing a letter and he, was, he wrote to fathers, you know, you know, describing in his particular language that they have known him who is from the beginning, describing their, the level of relationship they have with God. And now, at this stage of fatherhood, they know God. They have not forgotten the God who they know from the beginning. And they have been also this, also this, also the young men because they are strong and the word of God, you know, abides in them. At the stage of the word of God, the stage of young men is a place where the word of God should be very, very vibrant, you know, and you know, flowing, you know, with, with, um, uh, as an endless flow or a, an unhindered fellowship and in the synchrony, you know, we are in our lives. Amen. If you read Hebrews 5 14, Hebrews 5 14 says, But solid food is for the mature who out of practice have their senses strength to discern between good and evil. So this, this is Hebrews 5 14 talking about when we mature, we begin to desire solid food. We begin to desire solid food. Um, and uh, that begins to train our senses to reach the discern between good and evil. Between good and evil. Amen. So, um, but the, 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 I'll start from, um, I'll start from, uh, first, second Peter 3.18, you know, which gave us a very, um, like a picture of the beginning. It said, but grow in grace, you know, and in the knowledge of our Lord, and Savior Jesus Christ. Initially, he said in verse 17, 2 Peter 3, verse 17, he said, You therefore, beloved, seeing you know these things, beware lest also being led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness. Maybe I should even backtrack and read in the earlier uh, verse. He said, in verse 16, he said, And also in all letters, speaking in them of these things, which are some, which as some things are to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures to their own destruction. But you, therefore, beloved, seeing you know these things before, beware lest you also be led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness. Say, but rather grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That if you grow in grace, actually, the last verse, the verse is the condition to be able to, to, to be sustained. So the verse, the, the verse 18 is the condition 
on which anyone would be sustained from the calamity of the previous verses. You know, the previous verses talked about falling away, you know, and then falling for the error of the wicked and falling from steadfastness. He said, if you only, if you grow in grace and the knowledge of your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, you will be able to, um, that is the antidote to, to solving those issues. We falling away fall into the error of wickedness or fall into mischief or fall into uh, 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 faithlessness and all of all that. So, you see that the panacea to, um, to, 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 to being in the law, to being, to, 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 to be in righteousness, to stay away from sin, to be in faithless, to overcome faithlessness, to overcome the issue of uh, uh, um, uh, um, error, the Bible says is by growing, is by growing, and what is what kind of good is this Christ? He said, grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is grace, obviously, because you know He is the dispenser and the dispensation of grace started from Christ. And um, and when we talk about knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we are not talking about just a mental ascent. You know, we're not talking about just something. You know, so it's something that remains in your memory. But we're talking about a volitional knowledge. We're talking about a, an intimate knowledge, a knowing, a, 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 a kind of fellowship, you know, a fellowship with your Lord and Savior that is that brings about change, that brings about instructions, that brings about direction to your life, that brings about, you know, leading, leading you into, into all of God's will and precepts. Hallelujah. So that is what it means by the knowledge of God. Actually, if you go deep and to, to look at that word knowledge, you know, you discover that what I'm talking about is is a is a is a, is a, is a is an intimate an intimate thing with the Lord. Amen. So that's what the Bible tells us to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus. I would like to also read First Peter, um, First Peter two. First Peter two, um, two two. Yep. Okay. So I read from verse one. It said, First Peter chapter two from verse one. It says, Why laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies all evil speakings? As newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the word, that you may grow thereby. Hallelujah. As newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the Lord, that you, of the word, that you may grow thereby. If so be, you have tasted the Lord is gracious. I think I, can, I think I can leave it there. So, you see, this is the Bible encouraging us, telling us the first steps, the first steps to take. He said, as newborn babes, you have to, you, for you to grow, in the Lord, you have to desire the sincere meek of the word of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you can see the, I've by this introduction, you know, made us see, uh, you know, or I like to us the importance of growth. Now, growth, growth should naturally be growth should naturally be a normal consequence of our ongoing fellowship with God. It should actually be uh, it's not something we're not talking. We're not talking about growth as to you know a mechanical thing of uh, where, where you want to wake up every morning and ask yourself if you have grown or not. No, that's not that's not the way spiritual spiritual things work. It's not out of uh, something you're trying to create by your energy and strength. No, uh, it, it's an ongoing thing as you fellowship with God, as we walk with the Lord. You know. As we walk with the Lord, as we give attention to His Word, to the to to, to scriptural principles, growth should naturally occur with us. You know, even the natural, you really don't wake up every morning to check your height. You really don't wake up every morning to check your weight. You really don't wake up every morning to check your all your biological. Uh, uh, what is it called? Markers to, to, to be sure, you know, to whether you are, whether you are, uh, of what stage of growth. No, we are not actually that as, uh, maybe over time, over time we check out, but not like you say, it's not a daily routine. We, we engage in the natural to, to check our growth. But what we're saying is that the same thing too, also in the spirit, as we just, as we just flow with the principles of scriptures, as we flow with the principles of the spirit, you know, as we understand what they are and also, you know, do the works that are involved with it, you know, involve them in our lives. You know, the Bible actually says that we will grow. 
we will actually grow thereby. That's why I say, as you desire, because desire is one thing. As you desire, you will grow. As you desire the word, you will grow. Growth will naturally happen to you. So, so supernaturally, we develop in our spiritual life if we imbibe spiritual principles into our daily routine. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, uh, in, 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 in being able to now or be practical about how the principles that we need to involve in, in, our, in, our, in our spiritual growth process, I've highlighted some, some key elements you know, that are important because as a child of God, um, you, when you reach, when we reach through scripture, scripture actually give us a roadmap. Scripture actually give us principles, you know, to follow principles in the New Testament. It's not like, like I always say, our, our spiritual life is not just there in the abstractness of things. No, there are also, there are, there are, there are patterns that God has set that if we follow those patterns, if we follow those laws, if we follow those, those, those principles, you know, over the years, over the time, we will grow in our understanding of the ways of God. We will grow in the grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So uh, I, I, I believe we, 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 are, we are getting some insight from what I'm um, um, talking about this morning. Number one, I, I lighted, you know, the uh, um, the, issue, the issue of forgetting uh, forgetting the past, forgetting about the past. If we read Philippians, Philippians chapter three. From verse 13 to 14. He said, Brothers, this is Paul speaking, the letter I wrote to the Philippian church. He said, Brothers, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth to the things which are before. He said, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let us, therefore, as men as be perfect, be thus minded, and if in anything you be otherwise minded god shall reveal even this to you so you see a path of the path of the responsibility of growth is to keep looking forward is to keep moving forward or moving ahead uh, and there are many issues that we will be plagued with in our journey towards spiritual growth and maturity you know but the bible even even recognizing this tells us that the first point the first point or the strongest point, the principle to moving forward, the principle to growing in the Lord is to keep moving forward. Hallelujah. Is to keep moving forward. The issues of our, you know, as newborn children of God, after, the, after, our, after, our, after our confession of faith, you know, you discover that as you begin to make progress in God, one of the things that begin to plague you is the issues of your past. The issues of your incapacities, the issues that you are, because you are still a baby Christian. So you begin to see your vulnerabilities. You begin to see your errors and your mistakes. The issues of your past, your present mistakes, your inability to measure up to the standard of God. You know, you know, just like the issues of the law begin to come again, begin to appear. You know, in the law, the law was given to the Israelites, you know. And that law began to reveal the sin in them, their inability to measure up to the sin. I tell you, in your early Christian journey, that's one of the things you begin to see. As a matter of fact, you see it all through your Christian journey. But you know, but the, those who have who have come to a certain level of maturity already know this principle. But those who are at the beginning of, of, of their of their journey, you know, are not well acquainted, and the enemy can use that as a stumbling block for them. So that is why Paul told us. He said, he said, this one thing I do, I forget about the things that are behind. I press forward to the things that are ahead of me. I rather press towards the mark for the price of the high calling that is in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. We must, we must keep pressing forward. So you, you fall, you, 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 make an, you make a mistake, you make an error, you know, that I lighted to you by the Holy Spirit. As soon as the Holy Spirit highlights a, 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 a mistake to you, an error to you, a sin to you, what do you do as a child of God? You confess it. You know, you repent and you confess it. After confession, God has forgiven and has cleansed you. And has cleansed you. The Bible says, for he is faithful, you know, to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If you keep yourself in the error of your present, if you keep yourself in the error of the past, you will never move forward. You will always be held back by that. You will always be held back in a spot. But the, 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 the secret to growing in the Lord, the secret to growing in Christ is that we must keep, we must leave behind. 
we must leave behind. We must keep our, our, our mistakes behind and we must press towards the mark for the price of the high calling that is in Christ Jesus. The same thing again is saying is in 1 John 2, 1 John 2, he said, My little children, these things I write to you, that you sin not. It's, you see the opening of that scripture, my little children, that's to tell you the premise. Those who are growing in the Lord, those who are beginning their journey in Christ, those who see themselves as continuing in the journey of the Lord. He said, My little children, these things I write unto you, that you sin not. You sin not. He encourages you, do not sin, because in your new life in Christ does not encourage sin. You know, you're actually meant to be you actually live to, you're meant to live sinless because grace has not come for you to live above sin. He said, But if any man sin, because there will all there will there's always that tendency to sin, because in the flesh we will still sin. Now, this is to say, this is let me put, also explain this or put a caveat here. Uh, that yeah, because our journey, when we talk about salvation, salvation journey is not it's not just it's not, it's not just a one-off thing, it's a it's a, it's the entire journey of our lives. You know, it's for it spans through the entire lifespan, and we say this to say that the salvation of the confession of our faith, when we made declaration of Christ redemption, you know, and recreation happened in our spirit. But with the soul, we're going to go through that ongoing journey of salvation. So that's why we have salvation now, salvation ongoing, and salvation that will finally be done, will be consummated in our body. So we have an advocate with the Father. This is what we have. We have an advocate with the Father. An advocate is someone that speaks on your behalf. You know, Jesus, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he is the propitiation for our sins. And not for us only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Also for the sins of what? Of the whole world. So, so know this. Know this, you know, that Jesus is right there speaking for you. So confess your sins. It will forgive you and you move on. The same thing again said in 1 John 1, 1 John 1, 9. I just like to read it. I think it's very important. 1 John 1, I said, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And to cleanse from all unrighteousness. That is what he's saying. He said, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. This is the promise. Of the Lord, so so each time you find yourself in that in that huddle, each time you find yourself in that in that um, restrictive in that restrictive uh, um, spot, you know, remind yourself, you know, that uh, to move on in God, to grow in God, you need to confess your sins and press on. You need to forget the past mistakes, forget your sins, forget your mistakes, confess, repent of them, genuinely repent of them, forsake them, ask the blood of yours to cleanse you, the advocate, the Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ, our intercession, who keeps on taking care of that. Amen. Hallelujah. If we also read, God goes to my point two, talking about forgiving ourselves and forgiving others. You have to forgive yourself and forgive others. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32. Um, it says almost the same. It says almost the same as the first. It said, And you be kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. Even as God for Christ's sake has, for, has forgiven you. Amen. You be kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. Anyone who would grow in the grace of the Lord, of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, would actually learn to be tender-hearted. Would actually learn to forgive one another. Why do you forgive? Because you have you have been forgiven. <laughs> you have been forgiven. The Bible talked about us about our, about our salvation. He said it's not like we did anything to be for, to, to to be forgiven. We didn't what we didn't. We didn't qualify for God's forgiveness. We didn't do anything. Not that we loved, not that we loved him first. He loved us first and forgave us. Hallelujah. God loved us first and forgave us. So each time we remember that Christ forgave us our sins, forgave us our, our errors, forgave us our past, our dark, our dark past, you know, that should, that should inspire you. That should motivate you, you know, to be quick to forgive you others. Because each time... You, each time you are you are you are you are you are pivoted on 
uh, on a spot, you know, and uh, of holding people to ransom in your heart, of holding is uh, holding an issue in ransom to your heart. What happened? You are you are you are put, you are putting yourself in the prison. You are not aligned for the grace of God, you know, that causes you to grow, you know, to be released over your life. It's as simple as that. So we forgive. We forgive others because we have been forgiven. Amen. We forgive others because we have been forgiven. It is an, it is an element for our spiritual growth. Anyone, check out anyone that owes people to grow, anyone that owes people to ransom, anyone that owes offense so hard that they are unwilling to shift ground, you know, they do not, they do, they do, they, most of the time they don't receive God's mercy. To receive God's mercy is to give mercy. To receive God's mercy is to, is to give mercy. That's why it's very, very clear in scripture that if we must be kind to one another, when we are tender-hearted, we must forgive one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, we will, I'll see it again. Very, very important point in, um, in, 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 second, in 1 Peter 2. 1 Peter chapter 2. Again, verse 1 to 2. Chapter 2 says, Why laying aside all malice and all guilt and all hypocrisies and envies, all evil speakings, as newborn babes, desire the sincere make of the word that you may grow thereby. Now, this, is, this point actually is the, is, the, is, the, is the foundational point actually in terms of growing in the Lord, which I started with. But I'm going to, I put it again under, under, the, under my third point so that I, for, for, for the sake of emphasis. If, you, if, if the, the key, the foundational key to our spiritual growth is the word of God. Is the word of God. If we must overcome malice, which are the issues of children, guy, if we must over, overcome hypocrisies, envies, and all evil, stick, all evil speakings. He said, as newborn babe, we must desire the sincere make of the word of God. The word of God is the, the word of God is Jesus. Reading the word of God, studying the word of God is what opens up to, is what opens our sensibilities to the ways of the spirit. Because when we say the ways of the spirit is not in the abstract and just hanging there. So what we're trying to say is that there is a, there is a pattern to the way God lives. There is a pattern to the way God leaves his children. There's a pattern to the way God grows his children. So what he has said there is that eh, every little child takes milk to grow. Milk is essential for the growth of every child. Uh, because at babyhood, of course, the first, the first, first encounter is breast milk, you know, um, or formula, whichever the case is for, for the parents or the child at that moment. You know, and as they grow, you always have milk, you know, you always provide milk, which are the, you know, for cows, for the basic elements, uh, um, um, elements in milk, calcium, you know, for strengthening their bones, you know, protein, you know, for, to make them grow, you know. That is a very, very important uh, uh, um, element in the, in the growth of a, of a child. Any child that wants to grow properly, you know, is fed heavily on milk, is fed heavily on milk. That is what the Bible is to every little child, to everyone who desires to grow in the Lord. The word of God is the milk that you require. You can't grow if you do not imbibe, the, if you do not imbibe or develop or have a systemic way of studying the word of God. You will not grow. From day in, day, in, day out, your desire should be the word of the Lord. Your desire should be the word of God. Start from reading it. Yes, start from just reading the Bible. You know, start from just reading the Bible. Yes, I understand at the beginning, much, so much understanding may not come, so much revelation may not spring at you, but that is not what is important. What is important is study the Word of God. What the Bible says, said, uh, what David was saying, said, he said, that word have I hidden in my heart that I may not sin against thee. Because at each point of comfort, at each point of temptation, at each point of, of trial, at each point of, of, uh, of, of barraging of your minds because your mind will be challenged, your life will be challenged. It is the word of God that, that you have put in your heart that springs out as your defense. The word of God is the defense of every child of God. The word of the Bible says again, same in Psalm again, say the word is a lamp to my feet and a light unto my path. Every child of God navigate the path of life by the word of God. So you see, 
that's why these things are important. These things I'm sharing with you are very important because you see people, because spiritual growth is not a function of, it's not a function of how long you, you, how long you have been in, in Christianity. Do you get that? It's not a function of how long. It's not a thing of, I gave my life to Christ 20 years ago, then you have grown in the Lord. No, it's not. It's a strategic, systemic thing. Partnering in your life after the principles of the word of God. You can be in a, in, you can be, you can be a believer. You, can, you could have made confession of faith 20 years ago, or ago, but you have not grown so much. You have just grown religiously, but you have not grown spiritually. You have grown religiously. You know the things of that. You know church things. You know church patterns. You know church activities. You know the language. You have the, you have the mannerism and all of all that. But what we're talking about spiritual growth is it's about how you, it's about what you are to the Lord. It's about how heaven sees you. It's about your, it's about your capacity in the spirit. It's about what you are. Your ability to discern good from evil. Your taste board. Your ability to, 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 to run away from hypocrisy. Your ability to run away from, from, your ability not to be tossed to and fro. You are, don't forget me. Your firmness, your maturity. You now I read it. Fathers. You know, I talked about fathers who have known God from the beginning and they cannot be shifted from what they have known. I talk about strong men who are strong in the word of God. And then now I talk about as little children who, dis- who live on the word of God. If you're not living on the word of God in a systemic pattern, if you're not living on the word of God in a systemic way, desiring it at the onset of your spiritual journey, you will never get to that point of maturity. And, and trust me, the more we become matured in the Lord, the better we are useful for the kingdom. The more we grow in the will of God, the more we grow in our spiritual life, the better heaven is able to use us. To affect his will. That is why God, every just remember that every child, at every child, a baby is useful to you. But the next, you want your child to become a toddler. You know, you want your child to become a toddler so you can start moving about because at some point you get tired. Even no matter how love to call this call the child, you get tired at some point. You want the child to move about. As soon as at some point, and you get tired of the child running about as a toddler, you want the child to become what? To become a young a, 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 a young child or a, yeah, a teenager. You get, you always, everyone desires that thing because at each point comes with new responsibilities and new desires. That is how it is. So the word of God is key. And I must emphasize it. It is not even a function. We must also, not also separate ourselves from, not a function of how many times you have read, how many times you have been in church to hear, to hear the word, to, to hear word. How many places, how many meetings you attend, three the degree around the clock. No. The, every child of God that must grow personally must be personally invested in the word of God. You must be personally invested if you must grow. You must make the word of God a personal, you must have a routine. You must be able to study the word of God, the Bible. You must be able to study the Bible year in, year out, cover to cover. Before you now we're talking about narrowing down on chapters and and, 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 and concepts and principles and all of all of that, you know. So that is it. We must desire the word of God to grow thereby. Hallelujah. To go thereby, Amen. So these are these are these are very very foundational and basic principles. But as basic as they are, uh, uh, many at times people do not know that these people do not know these structures. People just 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 uh, follow the crowd, just come into church, you know. And uh, and over the years, you see that they're still battling with a lot of things, a lot of understanding. They still have a lot of loopholes because there's really no systemic pattern. Part, by, uh, there's no, no systemic path they followed in their spiritual journey to grow. Like I said, it's not mechanical, it's by the spirit, you know, but uh, it's by the spirit, you know, but these are all um, are laid out in, 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 in the scripture. In, let's see John chapter 15, verse 5. In John, the book of John chapter 15, Verse 5, this is Jesus saying, Well, I am the vine, you are the you are the branches. He that stays in me and I in him, the same brings forth much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. This is not talking about this is fellowship. Being in God, being the Lord Jesus. Say so continue in me. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and withered, and may I gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. Do you get that? That this is Jesus saying that you must keep abiding. You must keep fellowshipping in me. That's the only way you can bear fruits. That's the only way you can grow. In verse 7, it now says, if you, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done to you. So this brings me to the subject of prayer. This means the subject of prayer. That prayer is, is also an integral, integral part of our 
of, of our growth process in the Lord. There is no, show me a believer who, who has grown. I'll show you a believer who prays, who has a prayer life. You know, he said, if you abide in me and I abide in you, and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done to you. And it's amazing because the word of God and prayer are, 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 are amazingly intermingled. It's, you cannot be a word, you cannot grow in God with the word alone. Neither can you grow with the prayer alone. They are both together. That is why it says that as you, because your content of your prayer, <laughs> the content of your prayer is the word of God. The content of your prayer is the word of God. You pray to God via his word. You pray to God, you pray the will of God via the understanding of the scriptures or of the word of God. Amen. So that's why I said, he said, he said, you will ask what you will and it shall be done to you. That means to say that every, as we grow in the Lord, the Lord is, the, the, the desire of God is to actually, is to actually give answers to our prayers. God actually desires to give answers to our prayers. But this, these prayers are, are as we, according to this word or according to his will, which is his word that is in us. Amen. Which is his word that is in us. So, if we must grow in our spiritual life, as we to grow in grace requires that we, 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 we have a prayer life. It requires that we have a prayer life. It requires that we have we, we maintain fellowship with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, you know, in prayer and the word. Prayer and the word. Prayer and the word mingle together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is the way our faith is built. That is the way our spiritual sensibilities are, are, are heightened. That is the way God relates with us. You know, we've had, done a long series in church on prayer. I, I encourage you to go back and listen to that prayer. Because prayer is not just, if you understand what prayer is from that series, we understand that prayer is not just, uh, prayer is not just blabbing a few things to God. Prayer is communication with God. It's a back and forth flow. It's a place where you pray, you speak to your father. You know, you know you have this man, is on, this God is authentic to you. He's really genuine and organic. You are in an organic relationship with him. And as you, as you, as you come in with him, you expect him to speak back to you through his words or through the inner witness of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. So that is how we, that's how we grow in our spiritual life. We grow as we pray. We grow as we pray. Anyone that wants to grow in a spiritual life must be a prayer person. Jesus Christ, it was said of Jesus Christ that Jesus will always pray. Jesus will always pray. Jesus would always pray. At each, 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 each time, he just had a, he just had a peculiar, he had a specific prayer time, uh, you know, where he would pray, you know, and, and after which he would go join the disciples. He would sneak away to pray, and after which he would go join the disciples, or after which he would pick up a particular task or pick up a particular uh, a, a, a mission, which were all springing out everything, everything, every, 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 every spiritual fit in the ministry, in the life and ministry of Christ, sprang out of his prayer life. They sprang out. Of his prayer life. Amen. Amen. So our prayer life is as important as anything. And then that brings me to another the, so prayer life. I spoke about prayer generally, but there's also there's also uh, uh, in, in, in our understanding in, in, in what God has also helped to restore, which is praying in the spirit, is also and the way our spiritual life is also accelerated. He's also accelerated. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Let's see 1 Corinthians 14 2. 1 Corinthians 14, chapter 14, verse 2 says, For he that speaks in an unknown tongue speaks not to men, but to God. For no man understands him. However, in the spirit, he speaks miseries. In verse 4, it now says, he that speaks in an unknown tongue edifies himself. Verse 4a. I leave it there. He that speaks in an unknown tongue, in an unknown tongue, edifies himself. Now, this is the beauty of praying in the spirit. Now, the prayer, because prayer is communication with God, does not mean that we want to just go to God and just be speaking all our all our grammars and all our all the all the vocabularies we have in our head. At some point you will get stuck. So that is why, thank God for the restoration of the of, of the Pentecostal of the baptism of the Holy Spirit, of the Pentecostal dispensation of God, where which we are able to pray in the Spirit, pray in an unknown tongue. That 
pattern, that medium of prayer, accelerates our spiritual growth. Because the Bible says that he that prays, and I don't think that I've read in 1 Corinthians 14, you know, 13 verse, um, verse 4, he says, edifies himself. Edifies himself, talking about build yourself. It's not about building yourself. As you pray in the Holy Ghost, you are being built. When we pray in the Holy Spirit, when we pray in a long tongue, you know, what happens is that, you know, I, 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 that is in our personal fellowship with God, God begins to, there is, a, there, is a, there is a dimension in the Spirit that we begin to operate. There is an opening of heaven that we are able to touch and reach. Hallelujah. That is why if you go back to Romans, uh, in Romans chapter 8, when talking about said, he said, uh, 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 they said the Spirit help us to make intercessions which cannot be uttered, because they, they come, they come a time where prayer is no longer about. It's not. It's not really about you. You know. You know. That's another level. You know. First of all, you are building yourself, and at another point again, it's no longer about you. Then the will and the agendas of God. You know. You begin. You become a vessel to achieving that. But do you know one thing? One thing I believe that happens because prayer is a two-way workshop. Why God is working on you. Why God is using you, why God is using your prayer to work on something you are also being worked on. That's the way it works. Just like when you're using an implement to produce something, even that implement is also getting the, it's also getting, it's also getting the heat. That's what happens. So, as to grow in the spirit, you must, Im- you must imbibe the culture of praying and furthermore, praying in the Holy Ghost. Praying a, a lifestyle that prays in the Holy Ghost, a lifestyle that prays in tongues and is private, you will build yourself. You will build your sensibilities. You will build your capacity. You will, build, you, you will just find that the, 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 the will of God, the agenda of God, understanding the ways of the Spirit, you know, will become, will become grace will be given. Grace will be given. Grace will be given to overcome challenges. Grace will be given to overcome to, to overcome sin. Grace will be given to overcome your weakness. Grace will be given to overcome your your your, your whatever challenges they, 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 they be. God gives wisdom in the place of prayer. Hallelujah. God gives wisdom because it's not a the path to our spiritual growth. It's not just a, a, a single way strip, you know. So God is using different elements to 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 fortify us. To make us an edifice fit for his use. Hallelujah. To make us an edifice what? Fit for his use. That is where the, 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 the path, you know, praying, you know, we keep us, we keep grace alive in us. We keep us growing and, and increasing in the way of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Another, another is, 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 um, is, is um, faith and belief. Faith and belief. I know that you say that, yes, um, I believe in the Lord. As a matter of fact, you came to Christ because you believed. You believe in your heart. You confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and you were saved. You know, but you discover that it's an ongoing relationship with the Lord. You need to keep faith alive. That's why the Bible says, For without faith, it is impossible to please God. For those that come to him must believe that he is, and he is a rewarder of them who diligently seek him. Anyone that would grow and that will successfully, you know, go through different development stages in, in their spiritual journey, must, must, it's a function of faith. <laughs> it's a function of it. You cannot, you cannot doubt and expect and expect to grow. You cannot be in unbelief and expect to grow. No, no. Faith and belief will keep us growing in the Lord. We must believe the Lord for what He's able to do in our lives. We must believe that He's able to bring us to the end of the journey. We must believe that He's able to deliver us from every obscurity of the present order. We must believe that God is able to take us away from the flesh. You know, or, or deliver us away from the, from the, from the, from the traps, from the traps and the entanglements of the flesh, and bring us into the realm of the freedom that is in the spirit. Hallelujah! Of the freedom that's in the spirit. Let's see Hebrews, Hebrews chapter twelve, verse two, uh, the popular Hebrew Bible, Hebrew faith scripture. Uh, why for from verse one says. Why sin we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which, so, which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set at the right hand of the throne of God. So you see, he talked about it first of all started by saying that we should lay aside everything, every weight, every sin that so steadily beset us. Then he gave us the then he gave us the solution in verse two. He said, How by looking unto Jesus, 
you we, we need to there is an exercise of faith there's an exercise of faith you know that keeps us going because if we look in ourselves we can do nothing or out of ourselves we can do nothing but we look up to Jesus who is the beginning and the end of our faith who is the beginning and the end that is called the author and the finisher of our faith and that means to say when there are times of difficulty when they are saying, look as if I cannot go this, I cannot go this further. You remember that Jesus Christ laid aside, you know, despised the shame. He laid aside everything and pressed on, you know, and, and, and pressed on. He despised the shame. He pressed on, you know, so that he could sit at the right hand of the throne of God. He endured the cross. So there will be moments of endurance. There will be moments when you have to persevere. To grow doesn't mean that it always comes, everything comes easy. No. It doesn't mean that everything is smooth and effortless. There are moments where you need to persevere. There are moments where you need to exercise faith in God, in the Christ that is able to deliver you. Uh, the, the last I will say, the, uh, the next I will talk about is spiritual fellowship. Spiritual fellowship in John chapter f- John chapter 4 John, 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 John chapter 4 Verse 23. But the hour comes now is when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in the Spirit and in truth. For the Father seeks those who worship Him in spirit and in truth. God is the Spirit and they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. So spiritual fellowship, is about, I think spiritual fellowship is the entire, is the entire um, 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 of of uh, of what we are talking about, the entire base of what we are talking about, that as all of all this is spiritual fellowship, in this journey, we are getting cleaner and better by the day. The last point I will bring about, I will talk about, is, give, is giving and love for the brethren. Giving and love for the brethren. I'll read, I'll read Luke 6, 38. Look, 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 look. In Luke 6, chapter 38, it says, Give, and it shall be given to you. Good measure, pressed down and shaken together, and running over shall men give unto your bosom. For with the same measure that you meet, with it shall it be measured to you again. With it shall it be measured to you again. I'll quickly read 1 Peter 1. 1 Peter 1, verse 1. Verse 22 says, Seeing you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit to unfeigned love of the brothers, see that you love one another with a pure heart. So there is the issue, there's love. Love is fundamental to our, to our, to our spiritual growth. If we must receive grace, you know, like I, I had given a point before about, about forgiving and forgiving others, but this is not love, you know, do interrelated. But love, you don't know that love. Love is involved in the in our in our cleansing process, in our purification process and our advancement in our in our advancement. And love is not just something we say with our mouth. Love is practical. That is why I talked about giving. So as you give, that's why I said, as you give good measure, present and shaking together, shall men also give to your bosom. Now, he now also says in First Peter now also told us the spiritual perspective of love and, and of giving. That as because we have been purified, because we have been saved, you have been cleansed from your sins. I need from the energy said, you were cleansed from your sins when you obeyed the truth. So now you must show sincere love to each other as brothers and sisters. Love each other deeply with a pure heart. Love each other deeply with a pure heart. As we love, actually, we are being cleansed. As we show love, we are being cleansed. So sometimes some people think, ah, if I give, it's just a stand now. Uh, no. Everything we do in our spiritual life, up, springing out of faith, Springing out of understanding, springing out of obeying the instruction of the word of God, actually contrib- actually has its co- actually has a spiritual implication in our in our growth and development. If you will grow in grace, you must learn to give. If you will grow in grace, you must learn to love. The Bible talked about this. I think since First John, it says, "It said, as we are cleansed, it said, as we fellowship with one another, we are being cleansed." As we fellowship with one another, the Holy Spirit is in our midst, cleansing us by the blood of Christ. Amen. Cleansing us by the blood of Christ. Each time we are cleansed, we attain a new level of, 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 of maturity in the Spirit. Each time we are cleansed, we, are, we, 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 we obtain a new level of growth in God. 
a new perspective comes, new understanding comes. We graduate in the spirit when we respond, when we respond to each of this uh, of this command of God. When we respond, you know, in giving, when we respond in love, when we respond. So you will pray, like I've given all the principles, you will do all of all that I've talked about. Forgetting your past, you know. I've talking about forgiving yourself and others. I've talking about I've talked about pray, your prayer life. I've talked about faith and belief. I've talking about also building faith, you know, by praying in the Holy Ghost. I've talked about spiritual fellowship, which is more, which is more, we must enjoy. And now I'm wrapping up to say that we must love the brethren. Loving the brethren is a key aspect of our spiritual development. As a matter of fact, if we go into the topic called designing the spirit, designing the body of Christ, you will discover that. If you don't, if you not, if you not accurately design the body of Christ, you know you are inhibiting your growth. You are inhibiting your growth. Uh, for what I'm talking about, even the um, communion, not the communion that we take, you know, is an is an is a is a symbolic representation of the body of Christ. That uh, which has a direct implication for our for our, of the way we 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 design or relate to the body. That we should love the body of Christ. We should, we, should, we should cherish the body of Christ. Love and the body of Christ is not far away. It's your brothers and sisters that you see around, you know, both in your local assembly and then maybe in other assemblies. Uh, I believe that as the Lord help us, you know, to, uh, to, to observe these princi principles, you know, to, to see that we are faithful to them, you know. Uh, 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 the, the fact remains that, you, like I said at the beginning, you are not, you, you are not, you don't wake up to now ask yourself if you have added, a, if you have added one air to your air, you, you know, if you have added one air to your head, rather. Uh, but your, 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 the, your capacities just begin to increase. You just graduate and inc and inc and get better in the spirit. You, your understanding of the ways of God, your interpretations of the ways of the spirit, your discernment, your ability to to be to be kept from danger, kept from for, from hypocrisies, kept from error, kept from heresies. You know, all of all this doesn't happen overnight. They happen as we as we as we as we keep as we keep on another journey of. Of, um, of, 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 of receiving the grace of God that helps us to grow. I want us to just bow our head and just thank the Lord for his word. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for your commitment to us to see that we grow, you know, to see that we grow in the spirit and we grow in the grace that you give, in the grace that, is, that is flows from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We pray, Father, that um, we will not just be people, uh, children, you know, after donkey years of, of, of going to church, just religious people, but Lord, we'll pay close attention to our spiritual life, you know, observing the principles of the, the principles of faith. You know, we both talked about them being the talked about the elementary principles of faith. And then with time, you will help us to graduate onto the onto the onto the greater matters of the kingdom, onto the issues of meats, onto the issues, you know, that makes us matured in your ways. Lord, we will pray for your divine help and grace. Thank you for your word that's come with grace. We will live up to your standard in Jesus' name. So refreshing. We thank God for his word. We thank him for bringing us so much of light today. And it's time to give bountifully to God. If you have your tithe as well that you want to give, kindly use the details displayed on the screen to do that. And um, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for the privilege. We thank you, Lord, for the grace to give today. We ask, Lord, that you enlarge our coast, enlarge everyone's coast in the name of Jesus. We rebuke the canker worm and the palmer worm for our sakes in the name of Jesus. And we ask for grace to do this more in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so for our weekly engagement on Wednesdays, we'll fast and pray corporately. And you can look out for prayer points to engage your day as we fast. On Thursday, we have a pregnancies where we study God's word. Um, also, you're encouraged to invite your friends over to be part of the service. On Friday, we actually pray corporately at 7 p.m. via Zoom. And also, you can stream on Mixelar. On Sunday, we have church on the air by 7.30 as we have it now. And by 10.30, we meet at 7B, the Rock Drive, up to Sineeti, Lekki Phase 1. So, we would see you next week. Have a good day.